Hi and welcome back to the WRX in the Shed build. Yes, it has been a few weeks since I've been able to get anything done on this. It's been fairly busy actually. Uh, I was helping to get a, a old VK Holden Commodore ready to go for a car across and rally sprint. Uh, put some photos here of that. Yeah, that's taken a bit of time. Uh, also, we ran some motorsport, which is what we were getting the car ready for. And I'll put a link to the videos there. If you don't follow our channel, then the videos will be up there. Also, uh, had to wait for Corona Freight. Yes, uh, ordered some parts and they have taken a great deal of time to get here. So finally got some bits and pieces now so I can move forward. So let's get on with it. So, really more of an unboxing video. Okay, so let's see what Corona Freight has brought us. Um, shiny hydraulic handbrake. A screw type brake proportioning valve. A switch panel. And a three inch silicon hose. Let's start with what we're going to do with these. Well obviously these two parts are related. <clears throat> this part here is to fit the intercooler so we can put the intercooler on the car now which is great and on the last episode I made up a panel for this to go in and uh, we'll see whether we get to fit that today or not. So a bit of quick education on how we're going to set up the braking system got this master cylinder here for demo purposes the proper ones already bolted into the car normally what would happen is the brake lines will come out of the master cylinder and they actually travel forward from the cylinder to the front of the car uh, where there is a ABS unit uh, the ABS unit then distributes the brake lines to the various wheels however of course for a rally car we've deleted all that you don't want to have ABS in a rally car at all that's no good so instead what will happen is the plumbing will come straight out for the front wheels to a T and then to the individual calipers at the front of the car. The rear however is a little bit more complicated. Basically we have got uh, this little gadget here, a brake proportioning valve or a brake bias valve. What this allows us to do is to manually control how much pressure goes to the rear wheels. In a normal road car there is some sort of valve built into the system somewhere already so that the too much pressure cannot be sent to the rear wheels under heavy braking which would uh, mean the rear wheels could lock up. So instead, we do want to be able to control that a bit, particularly if we want a bit more braking on the rear wheels. So we'll have some manual control of it. Once it comes through the brake proportioning valve, it will then come into the master cylinder. This is the input and this is the output. Now, the hydraulic handbrake is passive and the brake fluid just passes through it and for normal braking, it's not affected in the system at all. However, come parking time, or if you do need to use a handbrake, pull it up and then it's activated. Once it leaves the hydraulic handbrake, it then travels to the rear wheels and it'll be a T to each of the rear calipers. Righto, clear as mud. Let's start putting some of this in the car.
For the time being, I'm taking this hose out. It was actually to the boost gauge. It's actually been cut and split in a few places. Probably not that easy to see, but it's cracked right through there. So I will uh, put a boost gauge back in again once I can get some more of this pipe, or I might even use a, uh, a small silicon hose instead um, to uh, get the boost pressure through inside the car. Right, that is the intercooler back in the car. So the question is now where to mount the hydraulic handbrake setup. Basically, we don't want to move it too far forward. Obviously, it'll catch on the car in gear. So usually what I do is mount these things just in front. There's actually two threads here that I've cut out and two threads here that were captive in the body that hold in the factory handbrake. They give us a bit of a, uh, an idea where to put it. And so I'm going to mount it just in front of those threads there and right in the center, something like that. never used these things or one of these before they're called nut certs and they come in very handy now I wouldn't use one of these to hold an engine or a gearbox in or anything structural however uh, for an application like this they should be fine you can get these in aluminium and steel I'm using the steel versions 11 mil hole One of the big tricks when dealing with these handbrakes is you've got to separate them to be able to bolt them in. Uh, one of the really big tricks is to make sure that you don't lose the tiny little circlip that holds this together. Otherwise, you have all sorts of grief down the track. Okay, so that's the uh, hydraulic handbrake part of it bolted in. Uh, these are reversible, they can be turned the other way, so they can a uh, vertical, what they call a drift handbrake setup. Um, for us, and what we're using it for, we're going to run it in the standard configuration. Uh, I've used some uh, factory M8 bolts to hold it into position. sealing all these holes because it's very common for dirt and dust to uh, come up and especially mud even though the tail shafts in there and whatever in the transmission uh, mud and dirt can find its way past it and <laughs> force its way up through the hole especially if you go through a puddle or something so just a tiny bit of foil tape on there just helps to stop that from happening righto I've made up a nice little aluminium bracket to mount this bias valve and now I'm going to get it in there
Okay, a few more tasks checked off the list, which is great, especially getting the intercooler in, helping to seal it up and uh, keep the moisture out from the engine, especially now that the wet weather's setting in. I really want to get this car done very soon when we're stepping in the right direction. Hopefully, if the local supplier's got the fittings and a braided brake line that I need, we can get on and hopefully this weekend get the uh, brakes plumbed and sorted out, and that'll be the last of the major systems under control. Then we can put the car back together again and really focus on getting it uh, running. Anyway... Thanks very much for watching. Please uh, give us a thumbs up, like and subscribe. Click the notification bell too to let you know when we've got new videos out. And I'll catch you again on the next episode. Cheers.